Are you tired of always chasing your trade? Are you sick of buying at the top and riding it to the bottom? How's about always jumping out just before the party starts? Well, in this video, I'm going to attempt to teach you how to set up a proper stock screener to be able to find these trades long before they ever make their big moves north as well as teach you how to be profitable in those trades. So, before we get started, the only thing I ask for you to do is hit that like button. It's free, you just may like it. And if you find value in my channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button. And of course, if you want to be up to date on all of my videos when they drop, smash that notification bell so that way you can be notified when that happens. So, without any further waiting, let's go ahead and jump into the video. What's up, YouTube? My name is Uncle Smokey, and this is Uncle Smokey Stock Trades. And before I start this video, I would like to say I am not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. So please take what I say with a grain of salt and do your own DD. In this video, we're going to talk about swing trading. So in order to understand what it is we're going to be doing with our screener, we need to know what is swing trading. So a swing trade is any trade that is held longer than one day, but less than one year. Um, generally, swing trades are held for about two, three, maybe four weeks, a couple of months at the most. Um, but swing trades tend to uh, turn into bounce plays because once you've made your initial swing and you find your, your top, your local top uh, or your next higher level, you're then going to follow it down for its next bounce, its next low level point. So basically this uh, video is going to lead into the next video that I will be coming out with soon about how to play bounces. But first you've got to figure out how to spot the initial trade. So this is how you find a swing trade. And in order to do that, we're going to utilize finviz.com. It is a free online tool that is fantastic. I've been using this for quite some time while doing my trades, both day, swing, and long-term trades. You can find anything you want when it comes down to a screener if you know how to properly set them up. So let's get right to it. This here is finviz.com. You'll find a link to this site in the description of this video. Uh, on the home page, you're going to notice a couple of the main things I show you guys throughout the day and on my videos in the evenings about tickers. First and foremost, you're going to see the map here, and you're also going to see the three uh, indices. You've got Dow, NASDAQ, and the S&P 500. And as we know, we've been kind of in a bearish market lately. But that's all right. With the aid of Finviz and proper screener settings, we're going to be able to find the most bullish of trades even in the bearish of markets. So let's go ahead and get right into it. First and foremost, you want to select the screener tab. Now, I do want to let everybody know before we go any further, I will be putting out more videos about Finviz, uh, basically on how to find different types of trades in the market, as well as all of the different tabs that Finviz offers, so you can make different trades across the different markets, including Forex and crypto. So, uh, back to what we were talking about. First and foremost, inside this filters category, I want to go to all. All is because the reason why I go to all is because it shows me everything I want to see. Um, and I don't have to go through these individual tabs, descriptive, fundamental, and technical, uh, to get to my end result. I can do it all right here, uh, from one screen. The next thing I want to look at, uh, is down here. You can see all of the different things you can select for your uh, uh, screener after you've put all of your, your tabs in. So you got valuation, financial, ownership, and you can see down here it changes everything all the way down to charts. Um, and we will get to that here shortly. We're going to stick with overview to begin. And you'll notice there's 8,508 individual stocks in the stock market that we're going to filter through. We're going to try and get this list down to under 20. So the first thing you want to do is you want to start with your base, your foundation. You need to have a uh, spot that you can start from anywhere. First, 
I'm going to choose my country. And the reason why I want to choose country is because there's a lot of things going on geopolitically right now. This video is being filmed in April of 2022, in case this goes uh, years beyond. And uh, right now, there's a war in Russia. Um, there is COVID lockdowns in China. Um, there's all kinds of things geopolitically going on that will cause for an unsettled market across the world. So I want to go ahead and just focus on USA. Um, the reason why is because I can better control my trades here in the States rather than trying to uh, watch stuff that's overseas. Overseas markets have different trading rules uh, in some cases. Uh, the next thing I want to go to is my market cap. This is very important to pay attention to. I primarily trade small cap stocks, and I want to look for small cap stocks that are over 300 million. Uh, the reason being is because I don't want to limit myself to uh, just a, a small range. Two, 300 to 2 billion is a very small range. You can have small cap stocks that have a much higher uh, 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 market capital. Anyhow, um, let's see here. The other thing I want to look at is the average volume. Now, for me, I like to trade anything over 300K. And the reason why is this ensures that there's liquidity in that ticker that's being displayed. Um, so if it's got over 300K in the average volume, that means there's people coming in and out of it and, and it's being viewed, it's being watched. So that there is our base, our foundation that we can build our screener upon. And believe it or not, those three are basically what I use for almost all of my screeners. It only changes a little bit as far as it goes with the average volume. And then sometimes I don't select the country, but generally I always use this market cap and this average volume of over 300,000. Again, just showing there's liquidity moving in and out of this stock. Um, so the next thing we're going to look at now is going to be our analyst ratings. The two things that I look at as far as analyst ratings go are target price and analyst recommendation. The target price I always want to set to above price. What this means is the analyst target price is currently sitting above where the stock price is. It doesn't matter how far above, as long as there's room to go up, it's enough of a narrowing on the stock to be able to help us zero in on our specific screener. The analyst recommendation, I want to be a hold or better. The reason why I use hold or better is because number one, I don't want to go against the analysts. Remember, we're trying to find a bullish trade in a bearish market. And the analysts are generally right when it comes right down to it. They know far more about the stock market than we do and know how to read these things far better. Um, so we always want to make sure we're on the analyst side. Uh, you could select um, a buy or better or a strong buy, but I do believe that that narrows it down way too far and doesn't give you the ability to um, choose more than one ticker. So again, I use hold or better. Now, as you can see, we have already narrowed down that 8,500 stocks all the way down to 1,879 stocks. So we're obviously narrowing this way down really fast, but this is still way too many to go through. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look uh, at some technical analysis end of it, because when you're finding a swing trade, you're not only using fundamentals, but you're using technicals as well, because you're not staying in this thing forever. So the first thing we're going to look at as far as technical analysis goes is we're going to look at the 200-day simple moving average. I talk about this on a regular basis. The 200-day simple moving average is a fantastic gauge to determine what that ticker is doing. And this alone is going to set you up for bullish moves. So what we're going to be looking for is a price above the 200-day SMA. Um, again, what this indicates is that the stock is in an upward tra trajectory, even if it just recently crossed over it, that means that it is just starting its run. The next thing we want to look at is the 
RSI 14 here. Now, the RSI is not alone a buy or sell rating. That's the one thing you always need to keep in mind. The RSI stands for Re Relative Strength Index. This just ensures that you're seeing stocks on a discount or basically that you're buying in a dip. Um, you're going to buy in a neutral zone with this. You don't want to select an RSI that's too low. So what we look for is an RSI that is not oversold and is greater than 40. The reason why we're looking for this is because we want it to be pointing up. We don't want to be going below the 40 towards the 30 because generally that means that stock is seeing a bearish move or it is changing its trend. Um, so again, you want to stay not oversold and greater than 40. Very important right there. And as you can see, we've just taken 1,879 stocks down to 558 stocks. Still, very, very large list, but we're a lot closer to our end target. So the next thing we're going to look at is going to be more fundamental driven. The one we're going to be looking at first is going to be the return on assets right here. The return on assets is an indicator of how profitable a company is in relation to its total assets. Um, it gives an idea as to how efficient management is using the assets to generate earnings. Um, so basically, how profitable is the company uh, compared to its assets? So on the return on assets, we want to make sure that we set that at over 10% right down here um, and again this is just ensuring that we're getting a nice liquid company that has the ability to be profitable with assets the next thing we're going to look at is the EPS growth over the past five years now what this is looking at is ensuring the company isn't diluting the stock because when a company dilutes the stock generally there is no uh, earnings per share growth or it's really really low so what we want to do is make sure we set that to over five percent and again this is going to really shrink everything down so now we're all the way down to 71 total tickers um, that are available on this list now you could individually go through all of these tickers if you'd like to but there's one last thing that you can put on here to really narrow this thing down and that is the price so this is totally optional for you. You can go through these 71 tickers. They're all going to be decent stocks that you can, seriously, you can just click on charts over here and you can see that all of them have made bounces off of local bottoms. Um, they're all going to be hitting sort of an uptrend or they've crossed over a marker. Seriously, every single one of these could potentially be a great buy-in or a future buy-in. But me personally, I have a set level that I like to buy stocks at. I can't afford super expensive stocks. I mean, heck, um, you know, I, I like to stay underneath $20. So that's where I'm going to put my price at. I'm going to want to trade anything under $20. That takes that 71 uh, stock list all the way down to seven tickers. Seven very valuable stocks that have the potential to make you a lot of money. Now that we've got all of this narrowed down, we can actually let our technical analysis take control. This is where you're going to be able to set up your lines of support and resistance, your Fibonacci retracements, extensions, and time zones. You can also use your fan patterns and everything else that you prefer to trade with. Um, I prefer to use uh, Fibonacci's, uh, not only just a regular retracement, but extension as well as time zones. Uh, I also like to set stop losses at a 10% loss ratio below a key level of support. So that way I can uh, uh, prevent any major losses. So let's go ahead and go through a couple of these charts to see what would be a worthy uh, um, contestant for our trading strategies. So let's start right here at the beginning. ATR well, first, you're going to want to go ahead and blow that up because you can't quite see what's going on if you're only looking at a little tiny chart. Now, as you can see right here, this thing was touching and had multiple bottoms down here, but it also started an uptrend. But then all of a sudden, it had a huge volume spike and a lift. Well, we've got to figure out what's going on with that. Is this worth us jumping in on as of right now? So you're going to look for its catalyst. What caused this kind of a lift? Well, I've already kind of done my homework a little bit on this, but let's go ahead on over to Webull, which is where I do all of my charting, and we'll find out for sure. That was ATRS. 
and we're going to look at the news. So when you go to your news, it's going to tell you right here what's going on. Uh, Halo Zyme to acquire Antares for auto injector platform. Now, what has happened here was they have decided they're going to acquire this company for the average cost of $5.60 per share. If I were to select this, it would show you all of that in here. So it has reached that target price, and that is the reason for the lift. If you notice, if you go back to your chart, you will see that before that, it really wasn't doing a whole lot. Go out to your one day so you can see what's going on. Before that, it's highest high was only about $5.10 in the last couple of years. So in all honesty, it's already seeing a very high point and this kind of uh, turns away my interest. I would want to see what happens now that this acquisition has been made final and it's reached its target price for purchase. I want to see what's going to go on. So let's go ahead and nix this stock. This isn't one for our trade right now, but definitely keep it on your watch list because it could have the potential to be a big Big runner. The next ticker we want to look at is BSM. This is Blackstone Minerals LP. As you can see, it has been making uh, a lot of bounces off of an uptrend line. This is a line of support in an ascending channel, and it has been trading over not only the 200 SMA, but the 50 SMA, and as of late, the 20 SMA, which means it is an extremely bullish uh, channel. It is moving north in, at an ex exponential rate, and we need to find out why. So we're going to go back to our chart and figure that out. So first, you want to figure out where it made its lowest bottom here and uh, go back in time. So right here, you're at 316, 315. Um, we're going to go back right to here to call it 310. And then the news. So if we go all the way back here, you're going to notice that the analyst started increasing its rating. So naturally, short sellers are going to try and drag this thing down. They're going to bring it into a more uh, uh, profitable level for them. They want to bring it down and they want to capture it at a lower price and then ride it all the way up before they eventually cover. Now, do keep in mind, this isn't a short squeeze stock by any means. Um, it is just something that happens naturally in the market. As soon as the analysts change their rating, short sellers come in, they drag it down, they buy it up, and then it goes up. Uh, they go up with the market, ultimately making money off the backs of retail. Um, but that's for another video. If you go back to the chart, though, again, like I said, you were you were seeing these ratings go up, and they they increased their rating to sixteen and seventeen dollars. So if you look at your current price, you're at fifteen dollars, and roughly thirty six cents is the high it made, but still bouncing off of that fifty day MA, or I'm sorry, fifty moving average. This is on the one hour chart, by the way. If you go to see what uh, Finviz is looking at, you've bounced off that fifty day MA recently, making a huge huge high. Note, if you go way back in time, you are currently reaching a level of resistance right here. But this is pretty far back. This is pre-pandemic. And you would still take that into account again for where the stock is sitting. This again is one of those ones I would put on my watch list. It's not something I'd be interested in buying now. Main reasons being, number one, if you look over here at the RSI, it is showing is extremely overbought. So as of now, that is an indicator telling me I want nothing to do with it. But also, again, I'm a Fibonacci trader. If you throw up your Fibonacci extensions, you will see that it has recently reached a level of profit taking and it has blown through it. Yes. Does that mean that it could stop? No. But you have reached that level where I would expect to see algorithms kick in and start shoving it back down towards that 50 uh, SMA line. And that's just because that's how the market works. As you can see, it makes a level of profitability, breaks through it, and then comes back down to that level of support, that uh, uh, indicator that it likes to bounce off of. And that's where I would want to enter, is once it comes back down to this indicator. As of right now, it's way too high. So again, watch it. Now, the next two tickers we're going to look at are going to be tickers that have very strong entry points at the current moment. So first, we're going to start with CPRX. Let's go ahead and select that. 
This one here, as you can see, has been in a steady uptrend, but what you're going to notice here is this has recently made an inverse head and shoulders. Let's go to our chart and take a look. So as you can see right here, same exact chart, we're going to pull out our trend line and we're going to draw from this shoulder top to this shoulder top. And you can see you broke your neckline, you've come back to an inverse head and shoulders. Also, we're going to go ahead and draw another trend line showing that it's been in an up pattern for quite some time, as well as since it's made this head and shoulders pattern, it has started a trend. Ultimately, what you're looking at is an ascending wedge. Now, this is a great buy zone, and the reason why is because if you draw up your Fibonacci extension again, um, you're going to take it from the bottom where it tapped off the 200 up to your highest point and then back down to your lowest level. Now, what you've got here is your Fibonacci extension. You'll notice that when you drop it from your key level of bounce support, this is an indicator, 200 SMA, it bounced off of that, ran it to its peak, and then its next lowest bottom where it broke that same exact indicator. That's what's important. You're using the same indicator for both levels of um, resistance or I should say support. So let's get that line out of there to clean it up a little bit. Let's get this line out of here to clean that up a little bit. Now, what you're gonna notice is yes, it has made a major move back north and it has recently tapped off of a uh, sell zone. So you can see algorithms kicked in here, but the stock held value. It didn't make a major drop. It came down to that 61.8% retracement level and then bounced again and consolidated for a little while. This is on the daily time frame. So you've got individual uh, ticks or individual days. And then it lifted off of that 78.6% level and is now trading just above that 100% profit taking level. This is a very bullish sentiment. And this would be a point where me personally, not a buy rating or a sell rating or a hold rating, I personally would buy this stock and I would set a stop loss to prevent me from um, losing too much money or mitigate my risk. I would set it for this $7.42 level, 78.6% retracement. Reason being is that is a dip below the 50-day SMA and it would be a break of a key level of support that you see right here. If it breaks below this, I'm out. I don't want to uh, hold on to the stock any longer. However, there's enough chance for an upside for continuation um, to the uh, uh, north that I'm going to hang on for a little while. I would hold on to most of my position until this level where I would break free of profits. It's never a bad idea to take profits. Also, you want to look at that RSI again. You'll notice that the RSI is not overbought. It's not oversold. It's actually in a neutral zone. Yes, it is currently pointing down a little bit, but you had a red day. Um, volumes kind of come out a little bit, so monitor it slightly. You might be able to get a little bit better of a uh, entry point, but in all honesty, in my personal opinion, I don't see a whole lot of risk if you're setting the proper stop loss. All right, and finally, the one we're going to look at is going to be probably the best stock on this chart today, and that is SIRI, Siri XM Holdings. And this one here is probably got the best potential for a big run in the very, very near future. And I'm going to explain why. So the one thing I haven't covered on Finviz as of yet was what's going on down here, mainly because the may, the biggest thing I want to look at down here, because I've already set all of my individual sc screener uh, um, settings, was this short float. Siri, out of all of these tickers, has an extremely high short float at 28.5%, and that is ridiculous. Now, keep in mind, this has also got a very high uh, uh, free float, very high outstanding um, shares volume. So it's not like this thing is going to be a, a low uh, share short squeeze, but it does have the potential to have a short squeeze involved in this. Now, what you can see here on Finviz is obviously it is setting up inside of a nice upward channel, an ascending wedge. And I do like my ascending wedges. Also, it has recently bounced off of all of these uh, um, SMA lines. So let's go to our chart. Let's see what's going on. As you can see, I do have an extension already drawn up, but let's get that out of here. A little bit irrelevant right now. 
What we ultimately want to look at is this. We have a cup and handle formation happening. Now, as a technical trader, I really, really like this pattern. The cup and handle is probably one of the strongest uh, bullish sentiments that a technical trader can go off of. Now, you also will notice that we have earnings coming up. That will be happening on the 28th of April right here. And you'll notice also that the stock has recently been in a downtrend, but that does not uh, take the overall trend into consideration. We have been for several weeks in a consistent uptrend. So let's go ahead and draw up a Fibonacci retracement as of right now. We're going to go ahead from this bottom to this top because that is the highest level that we can see as of now. And what you're going to notice is currently we're coming down to that 50% retracement level. Now, with a cup and handle, what you're ultimately looking for is it to bounce off of a key indicator, which will also be a key level of support. And as you can see, we are coming down to that 50-day SMA line, which is also trading parallel with the 200 SMA line. You'll also notice that volume has slipped out a little bit, but when you've got a an earnings coming up plus a stock that gives a dividend, you can expect to see a volume push come closer to that time. With that being said, we are close enough to this level of support that my risk mitigation is minimal. I would be actually willing to set a stop loss all the way down here at $6.14. That's the 78 0.6% retracement level because it is not uncommon to see this come down to this level, see there, and bounce off of it. It's done it several times. If you were to take this line right here and draw it out all the way out here, let's do it. Not a trend line. Let's do a horizontal line right there at 78.6. The stock respects this line very, very well. Okay. So I would set my stop loss right in this level right here. Uh, probably like I said, 614, $6 in this area. So that way I mitigate my risk, but there's so much potential for an upside that I'm willing to take the extra risk on the downside. Again, with it having the ability to be a short squeeze, if it breaks these key levels of resistance, volume will push in, FOMO will come in, and that greater increases the chance of a long-term strong move. So let's go ahead and pull up our extension. Fibonacci extension. We're going to go from the bottom to the top back down to the bottom. And as you can see, we have recently hit those key levels of profitability. It has brought been brought down by the algorithms trading at a key level of support right now looking for that bounce. Again, if it if it breaks this $6.83 mark right here, you would expect to see 740 very very quickly. This is the way algorithms trade. If you pull this back out in time, you could easily see your next levels of support and resistance. 741, 834, which looky there, 814, pretty dang close, isn't it? Also, you'll see right here, key level of resistance. You want to look back in time. It could easily bounce off this level right here. It's $7.70 because this was resistance back here, pushed it down. So those are the things you want to look at when you're ultimately looking at these kind of trades. Again, this is the potential for a short squeeze, not just a swing trade. Be my guest. Jump in and out of this stock. This can lead you to some great bounces. And if you utilize the tools that I've given you and you go back in time and watch some of my older videos about Fibonacci retracements and extensions, you can easily see how to spot these bounce plays and to run off of just this technical analysis alone. With that being said, that's where I'm going to leave you guys today. I hope that this video was very informative. I hope you guys were able to learn something. If you were, always remember, like, subscribe, and always comment for that algorithm. Getting this video out there is determined upon the algorithm. YouTube likes to bury it if it's not being seen. So comment for the algorithm. Also, share this on all the social media sites if you'd like to. Uh, the more people that see these uh, easy easy ways to spot uh, potential runners, the more you'll have retail come into the stock. So again, like subscribe, do what you got to do to make sure that everything gets out to people so they can see it. Peace guys.